Let this circle represent $1 million. This is what $10 million would look like. This is what $100 million would look like. And this is what $1 billion would look like. Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, has a net worth of 117 times this number. And then, there's you. You're probably working a job right now. One that you got from the degree that you studied for in university. You probably don't have much in savings. Your living expenses seem ridiculously high. You feel as though you're not paid enough. You have credit card debt that needs taken care of. Maybe you're a student studying for a degree that you hope can land you a job that you hope can bring in some good money you probably don't have any savings only a pesky student debt hanging above your head wealth getting rich that all seems like a distant dream how did they do it you ask yourself seeing all those millionaires billionaires especially the ones who got there at such a young age it baffles you it makes you angry they got lucky they were born into wealth they cheated their way to the that top. money doesn't make them happy money is evil anyway. i'm not smart enough i'm just unlucky those dreams you had of buying that mansion your favorite sports car paying off your mortgage traveling around the world they'll forever remain that way just dreams nothing more nothing less you come to the harsh realization it's a rigged game it's been a rigged game from the start and you you're on the losing side of it but what if i told you you were wrong what if there was a way of getting there an actual equation to wealth, a science behind the way money works. What if you didn't have to abandon those dreams of paying off your parents' mortgage or traveling around the world? Would you call me a liar for saying so? I promise that I'm not. And by the end of this video, you'll understand. There's a side to the coin that you're not being shown. But I warn you, the road is tough. It's filled with struggle. It's filled with ups and downs. It will mean swallowing some difficult truths that the school system and society haven't told you. Wealth beyond what you thought you could attain. At the end of that road lies the freedom of never having to worry about money again. So, are you with me? Still with me? Then let's not waste any more time. What do you really think about money? Is it something you work for? Is it earned or is it inherited? Is it the root cause of all evil? Are you desperate to have more of it? Have you been chasing it most of your life? Truth is, then you're more inclined to believe that you two will not grow up to have much money. Or perhaps you went on the complete opposite end and decided to make as much money as you can so that you will never be in that position again. The fact that your school didn't teach you much about this subject doesn't help things. And because of this, most of you are going to have false beliefs about money that aren't going to help you on this journey. Now stick with me here, because we're going to have to change the way you've been seeing money your whole life. Hollywood has always had a habit of self-made millionaires and billionaires at such young ages. What makes them so different from me that you haven't quite grasped yet? Pay very close attention now. Stop chasing money. In a capitalist society, the rules of the game are as follows. You are paid in proportion to the perceived value that you have. And the people that perceive your value, they are the market, the consumers of the economy. The market is you, your friends, your family, your neighbors, your country. People complain that football players are overpaid, but for players to be paid millions, there has to be a market for the football industry in the first place. People have to see the value in football in the first place for them to want to spend money on matches and merchandise. And if the market has a high demand for football, guess what happens to the players who are at the top of their game? They are paid generously for it. It's not about how hard you work. 
the cleaner that's sweating and tiring himself out every day is paid far less than the accountant sitting behind a desk. Why? Because the market perceives the value of what the cleaner does to be far less than the accountant. As harsh as it may sound, the cleaner can be replaced by anybody. It isn't difficult to learn how to do his job and therefore the market will not pay him more than the accountant, the guy who spent years studying numbers, the guy who has saved his clients thousands on their tax. What is it about people like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos that makes their perceived value so high? The first step to this equation of wealth is quite simple. If you want money, solve problems. If you take a second to digest this statement, you'll realize that just about all money runs from this basic premise. If it solves a problem, money will be thrown at it. If it's a million dollar problem, then the solution will make you millions. If it's a billion dollar problem, then the solution will make you billions. Think about all the problems that a site like Amazon solves. The hassle of going to a store, the hassle of having to wait weeks for a delivery, cheaper prices, and so on. Not to mention all the other companies that Amazon owns and the problems that those companies solve. Jeff Bezos helped solve a billion dollar problem and was rewarded favorably for doing so. Uh, I, I see if you've been chasing money, then you've been doing it all wrong. It sounds almost paradoxical, but if you want money, it isn't money that you should be looking for. You should be looking for problems, and more importantly, solutions to those problems. And once you've found that solution, make a business around it. Wait. So that's it? Just solve problems and money will appear? So I'm gonna have to create the next Amazon for me to be rich or the next Facebook or Google? You've gotta be kidding me, right? I don't even know how to code. I, I don't even have the money to start something of that skill. I don't even- Hold on, you're once more going into old patterns of thinking. Start with a problem. Always start with a problem. Listen to the market around you. What are people saying they don't like? What are people saying they wish existed? What are people saying frustrates them? What do people think is incredibly inconvenient? Is that a problem that you can solve? And also, is it a problem that is worth solving? The final step of this equation to wealth is finding a scalable solution to the problem. Your solution needs to affect a magnitude of people. Starting a restaurant? That's not scalable. You're constrained to the local area and the footfall of that area. But a franchise? Now that's more scalable. Is your solution a piece of software? Then that means once that software has been built, you can scale it infinitely online without needing to worry about things like production or shipping costs as it's all done virtually. Good luck finding infinite scale with a job. But be careful. Does your solution require your time to generate money? Let's say you were a yoga teacher that charged $100 per hour. Congratulations, you only made yourself another job disguised as a business. There's only a certain amount of lessons that you can feasibly do in one day and therefore your income is time bound. But if you created an online yoga class that ran 24 seven with lessons you only had to create once, now that is scalable. Scaling your solution also plays an important role. Systems and processes will keep your business running like a smooth machine if implemented properly. If there is something in your business that you can outsource to somebody else or hire an employee to do it for you, assuming it financially makes sense for you to do so, then do it. Tasking yourself with everything is a bad thing. As much as you may think you're the best, there's someone out there that can do a better job than you. Once you've found a solution, it's your job to make sure that solution can be accessed by everyone in your market. It's not about your ego and it's not about what you're passionate about. The market doesn't care about your passions. So now that you have your profitable business running with the right systems and processes in place, it's time to move on and reap what you sowed. There are two likely paths you're going to face at this point. You either continue your business or cash in and sell it. This is the acquisition, the moment someone buys the solution that you spent years building a business around. This is Instagram being acquired by Facebook for 1 billion. This is PayPal being sold to eBay for 1.5 billion, of which 165 million went straight to Elon Musk's pocket and the countless other liquidation events that happen across the world. This is where all the effort that you spent into building your company comes to fruition. And if you choose to continue running your business, 
Well, there's a multitude of reasons for you wanting to do so. Maybe you love the company that you built and want to stick with your baby. Maybe you think you can add more value to the company and sell it down the line for more than it's currently worth. Perhaps that business runs passively in the background, so you don't have to do much to keep the wheels turning. Or maybe it's a combination of these three things. Either way, you did it. You solved a problem that the market wanted solving, and it rewarded you favorably for doing so. And so now I ask you, what was it all for anyway? For most of you, it was never about the money. Money is just a piece of paper, a number on a screen. Its value is only backed up by our belief in its value. From the very start, this was never about the money. Paying off the mortgage, buying your dream car, traveling around the world, never having to worry about your financial situation, it's the freedom that you were looking for. Your destination wasn't anything monetary related. It was a feeling, a sensation, the ability to do what you want, whenever you wanted, without ever having to cast the thought towards, can I afford this? Have I used up all my holidays for the year? How am I going to pay the rent? Will I be able to live off my pension? What dreams will I have to sacrifice because I can't afford to pursue them? The most important lesson from this video was never about the nature of money. It was about the one valuable resource that we all have. The one resource we will never be able to reclaim. Time. Is giving up a large chunk of your time towards a job that you probably don't like worth it? Is your life settled on working, coming home, watching the telly, sleeping, waking up the next day and repeating the same cycle till you retire? How many more hours of your life do you let slip through because of this pattern? Or perhaps you're fine with that reality. Perhaps you have no other choice but to follow that path for the time being. And if that's the case, there's nothing to worry about. The most you got from this video was a little entertainment and maybe a change in perspective. But there are those of you that understand the other side. Those of you that have the desire to never need to worry about money ever again. And so I feel the need to remind you, stop chasing money, chase problems and find the solution to those problems. This is the equation through which all money is found. If you desire liberty through never needing to worry about money ever again, then let solving problems be the meaningful struggle in your life. Does it mean you'll be happy at the end of the road? Does it mean you'll feel fulfilled? Only you can answer that question. But if your struggle is meaningful, then perhaps it's worth pursuing. are far too vast for me to cover in a single video like this, but if you do